Humans are putting increasing pressure on the planet at the same time that we need nature's life support systems more than ever. We need forests and wetlands to clean our water. We need bees to pollinate our crops. And we need coastal habitats to protect us from storms. So we need information about how nature benefits people if we're going to confront some of these global challenges. And we need it in this increasingly globalized world at a global extent. The problem is that these benefits happen at really local scales. You know, a bee buzzing through the forest on its way to a farm field, or water trickling over the land on its way to a river. Models until now have been run at a global scale very coarsely. So we're looking at much finer scale information. And by using that finer scale information, we can represent the processes really at play at a global extent that is the relevant scale we need for policy. Now, thanks to rapid advances in satellite data availability and computer processing capabilities, we're able to put together wall-to-wall -wall comprehensive integrated maps of ecosystem services at this fine scale, but at the global extent. We looked at where nature contributes the most to people currently and where people need that nature the most. And we find that there's a lot of places where people's needs are not being met. And in fact, that's likely to increase in the future under a number of scenarios. And where those needs are not being met is really inequitably distributed. So we'll, we see the biggest increases in water quality impacts, inadequate pollination, um, increased coastal storm risk in South Asia in particular. Going forward, the information that we're getting from satellites to feed into these models is only going to improve. Policymakers will be able to use this kind of information, whether they're targeting conservation or restoration of nature, to really promote the connections between nature and people and enhancing human well-being.